As my dear friend Sarah always says, hello my loves. I'm back with a video that's highly requested. Oh yeah? I'm back with a video that's been highly requested. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Hey? I'm not sure how I feel about making it, but do you want to come over here and get on video? Because that's strike three. That's strike three, not really a strike. I'm not sure how... <laughs> So this is a highly requested video, a little controversial, but that's okay, we'll talk through it. How I lost my baby weight. Disclaimer, before we start, you do not have to lose anything. You're perfect and beautiful just how you are. Number two, you don't have to rush it. It took me a year to finally get to a point where I feel comfortable and confident in my weight on the scale, I hate to say that, but as a gauge in my clothes, like I can finally fit things again, that was my gauge. I know like the typical thing is nine months in, nine months out, it took me longer. The other thing is I feel like society expects us to pop a baby out and go way back into shape. Some people say breastfeeding makes weight fly off of them. Other people say it makes their body hold on to weight or even pack weight on. I was in the pack weight on bucket, we'll call it. So here's what I did and how long it took me to get back to feeling comfortable in my own skin. And that's what this is about, is feeling comfortable and confident and nothing to do with a number on a scale or a tab inside your clothes. Before we get started, Baby Moss sent me over the best baby carrier. So I forgot that this was even a thing. <laughs> but then when they sent it over, I was like, oh my God, when I was very newly pregnant, maybe six or eight weeks, Adam and I had dinner at a friend's house. They had a four month old or a six month old. They had a baby at the time. Their baby was a big baby. Daddy was like six, five, 300 pounds, solid muscle. And she took after him, looks wise, body wise. And mommy was tiny, smaller than me. So she told me that she got this little belt and it almost has this seat attached where when you hold the baby, it takes a lot of their weight off of your forearm. Now, if you have a needy baby, like some of us, they don't like mommy to put them down. Things like cooking dinner, even just trying to get some work done, being on the phone, getting laundry done, household chores, it's really hard. He'll literally pull on my clothes to the point where he will pull them off if I'm wearing anything stretchy, or he'll like, try to push me away if I'm cooking. He'll come between me and the cabinets or even the dangerously me in the stove and he'll try to push me or he'll get tangled in between my legs. So this thing is so helpful. I can pick him up. I can put him in that little seat. It takes the weight off my arm. The belt is so cool. It has like a cup holder. It has a little zipper where you can put stuff in. So it's got Velcro. So as you lose your baby weight, you and a family member, a babysitter, the daddy can switch on and off because it's different sizes. And then it has a clip, kind of like a knapsack. Who says knapsack? Kind of like a backpack clip. And then you can even tighten that. So it's really sturdy around your waist and it holds baby up. I love it. I will leave the discount, all of the information and the links below where to get it. If you're a new mom and you want it, it's super helpful. Especially when you have a little one who like mine does not want to be put down. Okay. So back to how I got my pre-baby body back. When I was pregnant, I ate super healthy. This little guy, he's in my belly. He did not want anything sweet. But well, let's rewind. When I was first pregnant, I was pretty sick. I had really bad morning sickness and I had to eat a lot of carbs in order for me not to feel like I was going to throw up all the time. A lot of things that I usually ate, like nuts and that kind of stuff would just make me really nauseous. I think because it was hard to digest. So I went through a phase where I ate Starbucks wraps. They have like this Southwestern wrap, wrap Southwestern wrap, all more fun, that had just come out. It's so good. I ate at least one every single day. Looking back, they were 600 calories each, but hey, a girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do. So I would do that and I just ate a lot of starch. Anything that felt like it was soaking up or was making me feel nauseous. Between finding out I was pregnant and my first visit at the doctor at eight weeks, I had gained already 10 pounds. It kind of evened out when the nausea subsided and the second trimester started. All the second trimester, I was basically just baby and I was gaining anywhere between like a pound and two pounds each appointment. Then around 26 weeks when I had my diabetes test, I was still vegan at this point. 
26 weeks, I was not diabetic, but I also had an iron test and I was severely anemic at that point. I decided instead of going on an iron infusion or taking medication, my doctor gave me a little bit of time to try to get my iron up naturally. So I started eating meat again. I have a whole video about it. I'll post it up in the cards. Simply that opened the floodgates. I was not like this hamburger is good. It was like, give me a hamburger, steak, jalapeno poppers wrapped in bacon. I went from vegan to the total opposite end of the spectrum overnight. Cheese, meat, you name it. I craved it. I wanted it. My baby wanted it. My body needed it. I craved it. So I ate it. And that was putting weight on me fast. So by the time I gave birth, I had gained between 35 and 40 pounds. The reason I don't know is because I don't quite know where it started. I didn't have a scale in the house. My set body weight for many, many, many years was the same. But I think when I had moved in with Adam, I gained five-ish pounds, and I'm only five, three and a half, if that helps. I started at between 137, 140, and I gave birth, they weighed me in the hospital at 174. Six weeks later, at my follow-up appointment, I weighed 156 or 157 pounds. And although I did start working out again, it was a slow comeback. It was kind of a depressing comeback. Coming off of CrossFit while I was pregnant, trying to bring stuff back, the abs, everything was weak. So I couldn't work out the way I wanted to, and I was having a lot of issues breastfeeding. I was eating a lot of gluten at that point because things like meal and Ovaltine, a lot of stuff that I don't normally eat, a ton of oatmeal. I think my oatmeal that I was mixing everything into for breakfast alone was over a thousand calories. But I didn't care, I would do anything and everything to give my baby breast milk, and I didn't care about my physique. Between my six week appointment and February, I gave birth July 7th, six week was mid August. August, the following February, so six months later, I was still 155 pounds. And the reason I told you how tall I am is because I'm not. <laughs> I'm a short girl, so five pounds looks like a lot of me. Five pounds can be a whole pants size. In February, I was supposed to get married on the 13th, and I wound up coming down with a terrible stomach bug. I couldn't keep anything in from Friday until Monday. I was still working out regularly. I was still eating healthy-ish, still eating a ton of meat, still eating a lot of food. At that point, I had tapered my breakfast down a little bit, but not that much. I'm still trying to eat every couple hours, still eating all the supplements and everything for the baby, exercising pretty consistently, maybe three or four days a week, still heavy for me. So when I had that stomach virus, I'm not saying this is how you lose weight, it's just my trajectory of how I lost my baby weight, I dropped six pounds. I dropped to 147 and I kept it off. I didn't gain it back. I would go between 147 and 152 for a few months. I started to increase my workout. So I was working out probably five days a week at that point. I was really starting to take note of what I ate and just taper back the carbs a little bit. We don't eat junky and we don't eat a lot of sugar. But there was a lot of mindless eating going on. At that point, I had cut out bacon because we were still doing a lot of thing. So at that point, I cut out bacon and I tried to limit my red meat to once a week or even two weeks. Over Memorial Day weekend, we came down with COVID. I lost my taste and I lost my smell. While I had lost my taste and smell, I really wasn't eating. I could care less about food. It tasted or felt, I should say, because I couldn't taste it. Disgusting in my mouth. I'll put my full COVID story up there because they got it. So if you're interested in what happens, when you have a baby with COVID, I dropped down another five pounds. I was 147 to 152 from February to May. We increased our workouts. We were getting a little bit more serious about them and then when I got COVID I dropped down to 142. It's about four pounds up from where I told you guys for many years I was set. My set point was 137. 5'3", very muscular, and I hold my weight on the bottom. After COVID, and I got my taste and my smell back, and of course I was healthy at this point, this is about, it took me about two weeks to really feel back to myself, like I could work out again, like I could eat again, and I was healthy again. We increased our workout intensity even more. I don't count calories, I don't meal prep or anything like that. I eat typically three meals a day. I try to eat healthy foods, I have snacks here and there, but it's mostly oats in the morning with eggs. I'll put some chocolate chips with stevia. I make a pancake out of it. Or
or an oatmeal bowl. And then I'll do protein shakes with berries or banana in there. I'll do lots of spinach or I'll do a salad with chicken, a salad with tofu, some sort of vegetable. And then dinner is typically a bigger meal. And I'll do some sort of meat or fish with vegetable. And even sometimes there's a starch, not every night, but what I'm saying is consistency, but there's not planning. It's not like I only eat carbs for breakfast and I only eat protein for dinner. That's not the case for me. I think the biggest difference that happened for me, my mental health really suffered. I made a whole video about how I'm feeling like I'm having an identity crisis, my postpartum depression and anxiety, and I think it's breastfeeding hormones, a period fighting to get normal again. I got it back at nine months, and that's really when I noticed. Nine months is when I noticed the weight I was able to stabilize and come off, and it's when I got my period back, so that could be a reason why. It could just be your body is gonna hold on to weight until your hormones kind of regulate, and then your body will start releasing the weight. And then between nine and 12 months is when I start to really tighten up. And for my mental health, honestly, more than for my physique, I started walking every day. However, my stipulation for myself was if it felt like a workout or it felt like I don't want to do that, like the hill's too steep or I'm just not feeling it today, I didn't do it. It was not for a workout, it was 100% for mental health. And the more I did it, or I'm doing it, the more I'm really enjoying it. So I'll go up hills, sometimes I will, I'll jog, sometimes I won't, but it's my whole rule for myself with this is it's what I feel like doing and it cannot feel like work and it cannot feel like anything other than going out, enjoying time pushing baby in the stroller, Usually that's when he naps. I'll listen to a podcast, sometimes some music, sometimes I'll meditate, sometimes I'll go through YouTube videos. It doesn't matter, I want fresh air, I want vitamin D, I want some sun on my skin, and I just want mentally to be able to get a little more peaceful and zen. There's a lot of hills where I am, I'm in the mountains of Las Vegas. So without realizing it, losing weight and tightening up, my body fat decreasing was a byproduct of walking for mental health. I go out between, depending on the day, like sometimes it's 25 minutes because I have work I have to get done. Sometimes I'll go two hours because I'm just enjoying myself and I wanna go a little bit further. So on average, it's about an hour and a half. It just depends on the day, it depends on the weather, it depends on how hot it's getting, it depends on the baby's mood, it depends on what I have going on the rest of the day. But that's basically it. I didn't even realize it was tightening me up until my clothes started fitting me differently. Right now, I'm 134 pounds. I'm not trying to lose weight, it's all for mental health. What will probably happen is over the winter when I can't do those long walks anymore, if it gets too cold, because it does get cold here, I'll probably go up a couple pounds. I might put on a little bit of body fat. It doesn't matter. What matters is I feel good. It's helping my mental health. It's helping my stamina. It's helping my baby and I have some bonding time alone together. And it just brings me joy and it brings me peace. Is my body the same? No, I still have skin that stretched out. My belly was huge and I did not realize how huge it was until now looking back at pictures. My thighs were big, like I packed on weight everywhere else, but my belly was out here because I'm short and I carried all the front from the back of him until I was pregnant. He was like sitting funny. My belly was pointy and huge. So my skin was so stretched. The skin around my belly button, there was like a circle that was gray because the skin was pulled. And then maybe three days before I gave birth, I was walking with Adam through the grocery store and I felt a pop and my belly button literally popped out. And it was so weird, very uncomfortable. That skin was so stretched that I would have to put kinesio tape, KY tape, like the acne chews over it so that skin wouldn't rub against my clothing. Or I would just, this was the summer in Las Vegas, so I would just wear a sports bra or a nursing bra with lower cut sweatpants. So nothing touched that skin. It was so sensitive. Point is, my belly doesn't look the same. That's okay. I created a human being. Can I go back? Maybe. Do I care? Not really. I mean, who am I showing my abs to except Adam? So I guess I could show you guys and the whole entire internet. So you could see like, we're looking okay. We're looking good. But the skin, if you wear higher waist clothes, you can't really tell, but the skin is stretched. Like now you could see it. The skin has been stretched out. My belly button hangs over. It's okay. It's okay because I feel really good right now. I don't care about the stretchy skin. Do you want to come say hi?
Really, it's all about consistency, starting when you want to start and feeling good in the moment. When I was in the phase where I was so heavier, I would just try to do things that mentally made me feel better. I would try to look cute. Even if that was in leggings, I would throw on a kimono and a tank top instead of wearing a hoodie and oversized sweatpants. Just things that made me feel a little bit more put together and more comfortable in my skin. You're beautiful at any shape, any size. Give yourself grace, my friends. Your body just did the ultimate marathon. Your body is a miracle. It created a person. Sorry, I just created a human being and your superpower is what? So I have a little bit of extra skin hanging down on my belly. I made a person. I made a pretty amazing person. Are you pretty amazing? No. Stay off the scale. I only took gauges every couple of months. I only checked now because I knew I was like on the lower side to see where I was to make this video. And I also know it's going back up once I can't walk as much and I am okay with that. Let me know if you have specific questions about my workouts, about my nutrition. Let me know if this was helpful. I love you guys so much. Subscribe so you're part of the family. And what we'll see you in the next one. See you in the next one. Bye guys. Mwah.